Brothers and sisters, thank you for joining me today um, for this um, prophetic, uh, I guess it's a prophetic morning. The Lord has asked me to um, share and um, I've been walked through this process for the last uh, about two and a half weeks, um, but it was a process that actually started about a year and a half ago and, um, and now the Lord has brought it back into my remembrance, but over the last two and a half weeks um, has brought very specific scriptures and learnings and understandings into my path and has now asked me to um, share this. And um, before I do, I just, I invite all of you to invite Christ um, into your presence and ask for the Holy Spirit to um, help you know what it is that you need to know for yourself and that you will take all that is said um, to the Lord, any questions that you have, because he can answer um, your questions, for he's the source of all truth and light. I am simply the messenger that's been asked to deliver this message. Um, and so all I can do is what's been asked of me, and please please take all questions to the Lord. Um, so I'm going to start really quick with um, the scripture, um, and it's 1 Corinthians 13. 9 and um, it says for we know in part and we prophesy in part so at this time with what I've been asked to prophesy I can only prophesy um, in the manner in which the Lord has directly given to me to share and um, and in hopes that you'll you'll take it before him and then he'll be able to fill in the gaps for you so I can only prophesy in the, in the part that in which he has given me so what I'm going to share today um, is something I didn't think I'd be sharing, um, but the Lord has instructed me to do so. So I'm going to share this. And it has to do with um, the darkness that will fall upon this world. And um, I'm trying to gather my thoughts. So I know where you exactly what's going to start with this. So about a year and a half ago, he brought to my understanding that there would be um, three days of darkness that would come across, upon the world. And at the time, you know, when you when you hear a word like that, it's like, okay, God, is it like right now? You know, and I, I went through that process where I'm like, okay, it's coming. And, um, and then it didn't. And so I was like, okay. And so I put it to rest. And with all things, as you... Are still with the Lord um, and and when you know he plants that seed and when it's supposed to be nourished he'll begin to nourish it and he gave me signs throughout the last year and a half he's walked me through a few things and and then it's just pretty much been quiet about it um, until two and a half weeks ago and then he literally walked me through this process that I've been asked to share um, so a year and a half ago when he um, brought the understanding of the three days of darkness into my path, he actually sent me on this journey of, um, he revealed in different scripture, different text, different um, things that have been prophesied throughout the history of this world about the three days of darkness. And he took me into different records of this. So um, in Amos 8, 9, it talks about um, the new, the, the, sun going down at noonday in exodus 10 um, 21 and 22 it talks about the darkness that will cover the earth and then there's um, other records also and there's more in that but he was also taking me into other records of helaman 5 and 6 helaman 14 specifically says three days of darkness uh third nephi 8 so these are different records um that all testify of this three days of darkness that will come across uh, Upon the world and Amos 8 9 is really key in what he will have me share um, because there is a great sign that the whole world will see before the the moon or I'm sorry before I keep saying moon because I keep thinking of dark um before the sun goes down at noonday so um and he let me just I'm trying to really gather my thoughts because this is a lot and he gave me a ton of scriptures to share that people can reference to 
from all different walks of life, um, all different records that people have, it all, they all testify of this three days of darkness. So um, about a week ago, or I'm sorry, about two, well, well let me, okay, whew, all right, let me just, I have a lot of notes and I'm trying to like gather my thoughts here. So a year and a half ago when he walked me through this process, like I said, I thought that it was coming. I was like, oh my goodness, why is he sharing this with me? And but then he showed me, no, just wait upon me and I'll walk you through this. So, um, during the last year and a half, there was, you know, he led me through scriptures and then, um, about a, maybe a year ago, maybe a little less than a year ago, we were sent back East. Um, we had sold some equipment and we had to go back East. And, um, in the process of that, uh, we had been back East before and we'd never seen about these, they're called fantastic caverns, I believe is what they were called, but they're, it's this underground, um, cave that has rocks that are growing in it and we were impressed by the spirit we were supposed to stop and we were supposed to go on this tour and we were in this in this tour and we get they, they take these little carts underneath the ground and, and you can um, see these caverns and at one point the lady says there are two places of absolute darkness in the world one is at below sea level like at the bottom of the sea and the other is in this, you know, this cave, in these caverns and in, in caves, you can experience pure darkness. And they were telling the people that they were going to shut off the lights and show you what that looked like. And right as they went to shut off the light, God showed, or I'm sorry, the Lord said, I'm showing you this. So you can see the experience, what this is going to be like. Uh, the, and he brought back the three days of darkness. And I was like, oh my goodness. Like, okay. So they turned off the lights and it was so dark that I could not even see my hand in front of my face. Like dark. There was absolutely zero light. So he walked me through that experience and I was like, wow, that was, you know, that was, that is crazy that it can be so dark that you can't even see your hand in front of your face. And I left it alone. So two and a half weeks ago, um, I went through an experience and I've gone through this experience before and, and it's the pruning and the, the, um, you know, the old has to die so the new can come in. And so I ended up sick about five days before Christmas. I went through this eight day period. I was literally sick for eight days which is ironic because eight is the number of renewal and rebirth. But that's the number of days that I was sick, was eight days. And in the process of this, I was taken through, it, it started, it triggered this um, spiritual warfare, this um, this cleansing, pruning process that, that I needed to, to go through. And in the process, God was teaching me through this. And part of um, this that he wanted me to share is that too often when we get sick, we automatically blame a virus of the world or, you know, we got sick from somebody instead of going inward because God is doing a mighty work within his people. And at, through this stripping process, our bodies cannot hold on to um, negative things within our body and things that have to be stripped out. Um, you know, we, we, can't, um, we can't continue to ascend with those things in our bodies. And so... When I, as soon as I started feeling sick, I said, okay, God, what's going on? I've experienced these kind of symptoms before what's happening. And he said, he reassured me, it's me. He was doing it and he was taking me through this process, but those things have to manifest themselves in our body. They can't, our bodies cannot, our, cannot um, hold them in through this pruning process. They have to be released. And so when those things are released from our bodies, they can come off as illnesses, but they are not illnesses and it's God's doing. And so in the process of this, he's having me bring this up because if people begin to experience, you know, and believe that they're sick, do not give the credit to the adversary of, you know, these man-made viruses and, and illnesses. Go inward because so much of what's happening right now is literally God doing it. And he's doing it at for our pruning and um, purification process. And so give the glory to who it belongs to. And it, it is God. It, God. God is doing so much of this if we will just go inward. So, um, 
so then God began to, through this, these eight days of this um, purification process and this pruning process that I was going through, um, he started taking me through scriptures and having me, um, you know, go spiritually inward and, and teaching me things and showing me things. And I'm going to do the best that I can to put this all together to help people understand the purpose of these three days, but the magnitude and beauty of what will come from these three days also. Um, yes, it will be very hard for people, um, especially if you don't have a relationship with Christ, but the beauty in it all is also very, very amazing. So let me um, share um, the best that I can. I'm going to put these things together. Um, of, of what he walked me through. So, um, a few months ago, he had me um, do that prophetic declaration over that Satan will not be able to stop the signs that are manifested in the heavens. And he walked me through the process of the, um, the northern lights. And that the whole world will see the northern lights and that this is a very key event that will when people see that know that 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 within that day at noon the three days of the darkness will will begin um and the northern lights will not be able to be hid no matter what satan is trying to do to block the atmosphere these northern lights will be will be seen and as, after he walked me through that process of that i actually had gotten on the phone with a friend and I was talking to her and I started sharing like all these things that God was walking me through. And it was just, it was blowing my mind because I was just like, oh my goodness. He was just like lining it all up. It was like, a, I don't know, an accordion just being opened. And he was just like, let me show you everything that I've taught you. And so in that conversation, my friend had said, oh my goodness, me and my family just had a conversation last night about the Northern Lights. We've never talked about the Northern Lights before. She couldn't even remember exactly how it got brought up. But so that was a beautiful witness to me that, yes, you're, you're, you're understanding this. And, um, and so were other people. They might not understand why they're having these conversations, but the Northern Lights are a very key event in this. Um, and so Satan will not be able to stop the world from literally seeing this warning sign. Yes, it will be beautiful to witness, but it is a huge warning sign of Amos 8, 9 of the sun going down at noon. So, um, and then she had also sent me a video that triggered something. Um, she had, in this video, it was a very short, I think it was like a two and a half minute video. This girl did. And she had talked about that, that, Basically, the people, like, uh, Satan had come, and this woman was, he wanted them, people to worship him, and this woman is down on her knees, and she would not make contact, eye contact with Satan, and she was kneeling down, and she was praying to, to the Lord, and she was in that, the place of the Spirit, which, what the church is, is those who are Spirit-led, and that is what Christ taught to his disciples when he asked them, who do you say that I am? They were spirit-led people. And that is what his church is, our spirit-led individual people being spiritually led. So she went inward and when she was spiritually led through this prayer that she was praying and she said it, I believe she said it was about 30 minutes in and Satan realized she was not going to bow down to him. And in that, in that she actually felt the cells and everything in her body being, um, uh, basically renewed um, is the best way that I can put it at, at the moment. And I'll explain in a few more minutes when he, when I go into these other scriptures. But, um, and what was interesting about that is God had literally just had me spiritually instructing the cells in my body through this illness um, of letting the old cells die and new cells, uh, new cells be reborn so that I was, I was literally functioning off functioning off all living cells and no dead cells were remaining within my body. So there was that. So, and she also saw during that, that the people that looked on the evil were literally in this trance, this, this state of just like a trance state was what she saw. And so as God continued over, like I said, the, the eight days, and then it's continued 
um, uh, Monday morning was when he gave me the final okay, and I haven't had time to do the video, and I should have made time to do it. Um, but is when he uh, gave me the final understanding of this evil in, in Jeremiah 19 that will hit this earth during this three days of darkness. And so it's really important that we do not look on the darkness. Um, so during this time of being sick, I felt... Uh, well, I shouldn't say sick. I, uh, this purification process. There was one day where I was just, I, I just felt so heavy. And I was going through him and he was stripping like anything. Like it, it felt like a complete like let go. Like everything and like anything that I hadn't like ha had not let go of by that point, he was stripping it from me. And I felt like I was going through the biggest grieving process. It was, it was very difficult but it brought so much peace but through that forgiving process and that that just stripping what needed to go um i felt i just felt so heavy and at one point i just i i just had closed my eyes and i saw this huge barreling dark cloud i mean it was like it was barreling that's the best way that i can explain this dark cloud and it was so black. And in that mince, and in that moment, God said, draw your sword and ask the angels to help you. And I just remember just the sword of truth. It is our armor from Ephesians. And it is it's a sword of truth for a reason. And I just remember drawing my sword and I was just just cutting through the darkness as, as fast as I could. And I knew the angels were assisting in me to get through this. And as soon as I was through this dark cloud... It was the most brilliant uh, uh, colors and lights and just that I've ever seen. It was amazing. And so in the darkness, the sword of truth, our spiritual armor is going to be absolutely key in our relationship with Christ and using our spiritual armor for the in the manner in which the Lord has walked us through how to use it in, his, in the kingdom truths of God. Not the kingdom truths of man, or I'm sorry, there are no kingdom truths of man, but the, the, the gospel of man, that is not going to get people through this. It is the kingdom gospel that Christ has directly taught us that is going to get us through this, this these days of darkness. Um, and so knowing how to use our spiritual armor and call upon the angels are going to be very key in what is coming, not only for ourselves, but to help those who are in the same vicinity as us. Um, forgiveness in this is going to be key. Our hearts have to be so pure that no matter what is transpiring in this darkness, it cannot affect us. Um, our light will truly shine. And that is um, in Genesis. What did God do? He divided the light from the darkness. And that's literally what is going to happen in these three days of darkness. Those who are called by God... And during this process of the sealing process and and the this darkness, those of the light um, will be able to shine and help shield and protect those um, because of the pureness of their hearts, the purification process that they have went through. And as lots of us have been through this pruning, we've allowed the Lord to take us through this. This is going to be extremely key in what's coming because we are going to have to... Um, so we understand what spiritual warfare is. We've been through it. We understand what it's like to fight that darkness. But there were actually things in this that the Lord walked me through that I had not understood before. And um, I'm looking at these scriptures and I'm trying to, okay, where do I go first? So... Um, In Matthew 7, and I'm going to just turn to this scripture because so that I uh, read it the correct way. This is something he showed me after this eight days of this battle was over. Um, this spiritual battle was over. And um, this is going to be really important for those who are in the spirit and know how to um, know how to fight against spiritual warfare, especially the darkness that will come. 
And so let me share this. So this is in Matthew 7, and it's verse 6. Well, before that, it talks about the judgment, and that was part of the, the forgiveness and, and everything he has to strip from us. If we still have judgment in our hearts for others, if we have not forgiven, brothers and sisters, I plead with you to um, sit before the Lord and let him walk you through what you're still holding on to in your heart because... Um, it will make it harder for you to get through the darkness. It will be upon you longer um, if you still have judgment and um, unforgiveness in your heart for people. And so in Matthew 7, as he walked me through this, because 1 through 6 talks about, you know, first, don't be a hypocrite. First, you have to cast out what's in your own eye before you can, you know, help others see what's in theirs. And then he gave me six, and I saw the scripture from a whole different perspective after going through this experience. Give not that which is holy unto the dogs, neither cast your pearls before swine, lest they trample them under their feet and turn again and render you. So um, let me just break that down for just a minute, how he showed it to me. So when we are going through this spiritual battle, especially as this darkness comes upon us and people are going to feel like they're in the depths of hell. Uh, when I saw that dark cloud, I mean, I was, oh, holy cow. I was like, what is this? Um, do not speak. Do not let that fear out of your mouth. Do not murmur and complain about what God is doing to wake the people up because you are throwing your pearls before swines. They... The devil knows, and those who will assist in the three days of darkness with him, they will feed off of your fear, and they will feed off of what is coming out of your mouth, and they will render it again. So they will turn and render, um, sorry, and turn again and render you. So they will bring further, uh, I don't know how to say it, but the darkness will just become a lot thicker. They will use it to their advantage. So brothers and sisters, understand why this three days of darkness is happening as you go inward. Do not speak and do not murmur what you are feeling. Why are we having new experiences? What is God doing? And whatever that's going to look like, do not speak it because the darkness will absolutely feed on it. So as we understand, do not cast your pearls before swines. As we understand, we follow God. We, we have been... Uh, we have went through our salvation and redemption process. The Lord has walked us through true, true discipleship. We are in the spirit. We are his church. We are a spirit-led person individually, each person spirit-led. As we do not cast our pearls before swine, then in seven, and this will be really key in the, in the darkness, ask and it shall be given you, seek and ye shall find, knock and it shall be opened unto you. For everyone that asketh receiveth, and he that seeketh findeth and him that knocketh it shall be opened um so in those moments of this darkness um do not throw our pearls before swines do not speak what we are feeling um absolutely go inward let the spirit just completely bring the calmness over you and ask everything that is in the spirit ask and just allow that light in because God definitely has to divide the light from the darkness through this process. Um, okay, so he's going to have, I'm going to go through some scriptures and this will help have a better understanding of the three days of darkness. And like I said, I can only prophesy in part what he's given me. So during this process, I was led, uh, I already shared John 7 and you know, the forgiveness and, and don't cast your pearls before swines and know that if we are in that true relationship with Christ, we can ask the Father whatever we need to know and and he will share that with us and he will also give those things of, of pure intent within our hearts. So John, so Amos 8, 9 and Jeremiah 19 go together and Jeremiah 19 has to do with the great evil and I I would ask that each of you take these scriptures to the Lord and let him walk you through this process. But the great evil that that is going to come in, in this time of darkness and um, why it's being released upon the earth. And I need to back up for a minute. So in Matthew 7, when it talks about the forgiveness and the pearls before swines, 
He also led me through um, Psalms 107, and it has to do with the chains that are being broken for us through us and how we go through these levels of ascension, and each time it's chains being broken from us. So those two, Matthew 7 and Psalms 107, go, go really well together, um, or he put them together when he was leading me through this process. Um, John 17, he gave me, and this is the Lord's prayer for the 144,000 and his desire through this process of the darkness, Christ is going to come to those, those people, the 144 and his prayer is that they will stay upon the earth, but they will be protected by the hand of God. And through this process, um, when I talked about the cells in their, in your body being changed, this actually has to do with Mark nine, um, and Mark nine, but specifically verse two, but the whole thing is very important. And it actually has to do with the translation, um, process when, when Christ was transfigured and the people, the 144 will literally be transfigured and their missions will begin. And this is the return of the ancient. Um, and it's the restoration of, this is the restoration of all things, including the restoration of us and who we've been eternally for God. So Mark 19 is really important. He also led me to um, Alma 13, and this has to do with the power of the priest, that this is the power of God, not, not what man has taught, but this is the power of God, that through this process, his priest of power, and this is throughout, obviously throughout scripture um, in the Bible, um, that will flood the earth. And it is directly given from God um, Everything that his son had was promised to his people. And now we will see the miracle signs and wonders come forth. And this will be, um, you know, Revelation 7, the sealing of, of the 144,000 that will stay upon the earth. Um, he then gave me Mark 16. And Mark 16 is after he, you know, his disciples did not believe that it was really him that he had came and and Mark 16 is really key because at this point, we will then see um, the gospel, the kingdom gospel of God now preached throughout all the world by the 144,000. And um, I'm just, I'm being impressed. I'm supposed to share. Okay, so Mark 16 um you know, it says at first they were afraid and they believed not that it was him. And it says, after that, he appeared in another form unto two of them as they walked and went into the country. And they went and told it unto uh, the residue, neither believed they them. So three times he, he went, he even changed form and was like, you know, okay, guys, it's me. So at this point, um, Let's go to 15, and it says, And he said unto them, so now he's talking to, to his disciples that he's called, and, and this is part of the translation process that will, go, will happen during these three days of darkness for um, the Lord's people to begin their missions, just like how he was transfigured and his mission, his mission began. He was transfigured. The people saw this, uh, or some of his disciples saw this. And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel, to every creature. And what is the gospel? It's not the gospel of man. This is the gospel of the kingdom of God that Christ has directly been walking uh, people through true discipleship of the kingdom gospel. He's brought us back into remembrance of all things from the beginning um, bef uh, before the foundation of the world, what people were foreordained to do, their missions were going to begin. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. And these signs shall follow them that believe. So here's the signs that are gonna that are gonna follow these people. In my name shall they cast out devils, they shall speak in new tongues, they shall take up serpents, and if they drink any deadly thing it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. So then after the Lord had spoken unto them, he was received up into heaven and sat on the right hand of God. And we will see that again. He will come um, during those three days of darkness to bring the light. The light will be reckoned. And then he's going to go set with the Father and wait as 144 fulfill their missions and until and the Father says, okay, now it's time for you to return to the earth. 
But this earth has to go through a mighty um, cleansing in order for that to happen. And the truth has to be brought back. And they went forth and preached everywhere, the Lord working with them. So the Lord working with them and confirming the word with signs following. So signs, miracle signs and wonders will follow. Um, so brothers and sisters, this is actually a glorious time. Um, it's, it's a time that the world needs so that this great awakening, so people can see that God is God and they've, this time of, of evil, it's, it has to take place in order for the fulfillment of all prophecy to happen and God's word will not come back void. So these, these three days of darkness has to happen, but if we can see the beauty behind it and that and and help shield people and help them see the light that there truly is there and lead people to Christ in this process. Um, just it will truly be worth it. And if we realize that we've went through these spiritual warfares because everything has been a preparation for what is coming, um, and allowing. God to show us things through his eyes. I truly pray that each of you will take this to the Lord. Um, I've done the best that I can. It was, there's, there's so much and And I pray that each of us will truly take um, our questions to the Lord and allow him to teach us and help us to understand things and see things through God's eyes uh, and no longer through man's, no longer through basically allowing Christ to remove the veil. We're, we're unveiled and we see things through God's eyes for what they are. Um, this, this time, as scary as it is, um, or as it could sound, um, and probably will be, um, if we can see and understand why, you know, um, the one thing that he just brought back to my remembrance that I need to encourage is, you know, when we see the northern lights, yes, they are going to be beautiful, but that is a time to get your family home. Um, stay inside, um, you know, co cover your windows just so that you're not looking upon the evil. Um, because like the lady talked about, and yes, it'll, it'll, it's, it's not going to be good. The evil, we, we don't, we don't want to look upon the evil. Um, do not leave your homes. Don't open your doors. And this is not to put fear. This is just what the Lord has walked me through. Even if you hear someone outside your door with a familiar voice and you're like, oh, I need to open my door, don't. Um, that's tactic of the adversary. Um, probably earplugs would be very helpful, especially if you're in a in an area that's highly populated. Um, so... Um, that's probably... That's probably the best that I can can give right now. Just that's just what I feel him telling me, and and I know that that sounds heavy, and I I guess I wanted to bring all the light into this video, but um, the reality is the reality of it also, and so let this just be a voice of warning, um, and fulfilling the purpose of why. I was walked through this process over the last two and a half weeks um, so that I could share and warn and invite you that if you haven't found Christ for yourself, if you haven't built that relationship, please turn to him. His hand is extended and he truly desires for each of us to turn to him and allow him to walk us through this process of ascension and um, back into remembrance of, of all things, um, because that was a promise that he would take us back into remembrance. 
of who we are, where we came from, the God in which we truly serve, not the God that this world has served, but, um, and that all that the Father gave to the Son, the Son would give to us. Um, and he desires to bless us with that. And I'll just wait and see if there's anything more he wants me to share. So, um, I will leave these scriptures in the description. There is one really quick. He just showed me. <laughs> um, so in this process, he did show me something in second Timothy three, one through seven. I went through an experience where, um, after I was sick, I was with some family and he had instructed me to, to, um, bring healing. And I was just like, Oh my goodness. Are you kidding me? Because the family that I was with, that's just not something that they believe in. And so I was like, okay, God, I'll do this. And so I did it. I was led by the spirit. It was a very powerful experience and nothing happened. And I was like, oh my goodness, God, why did you ask me to go through that? And in second Timothy, um, let me just look it up really quick. We are going to experience this, and this is something that he says, you know, you need to see this. It also, for me, he was like, you know, scripture fulfilled <laughs> um, as I witnessed this happen because the people that I was with are very religious people, um, and I was really shocked by this experience because some of them were freaking out and, like, uh, were just like, oh, my goodness, what's going on, and it, it kind of set me back of, God, why did you ask me to do that? So in 2 Timothy 3, um, so it talks about, it, well, you can read the whole thing for yourself, but I'm going to read 5 through 7, but it says, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. So the, this family is very religious, but when they saw the power of God, they absolutely just denied the power. They don't want anything to do with that. Um, from such turn away. And that's exactly what I witnessed. Um, for of this sort are they which creep into houses and lead captive silly women laden with sin, um, led away with diverse lust, ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. And that's what I saw because these family members are always learning and they're always talking about scripture, but they're never allowing Christ to become the teacher in their life. And so they are always learning, but they are never able to come to a knowledge of the actual truth of God. Um, they have the truth of men. And so we will, um, you know, as we try to warn and help people, we are going to see people that, um, deny the truth of God, but they have a form of godliness, right? Religion, they, it's, but they deny the power of God. Um, and so he had wrapped that up with that. And I was like, okay, so brothers and sisters, you know, I encourage you that I know that we're coming into times where the Lord is definitely like, he's, he's, got to get his truth out and it can be a scary place. Um, it can be a place that is, is uncomfortable, but as I shared um, before, you know, we've been instructed in scripture to let our light so shine before men that they see our, see your good works and glorify your father, which is in heaven. He doesn't give us that light, these, these truths to put them under a bushel and to hide them, but to share them. And so I just, I would just encourage that whatever you're being asked to share by the spirit, no matter what people say that you'll, you'll share the light that, that God has given you to share. And again, I just ask that you would take all these to the Lord. And like I said, I'll leave these scriptures in the description so that you can read them with the Lord and, and go over them for yourself. Um, with him. So, um, I hope that this helps and I hope that this helps prepare us and, we can see things through the lens of God or the, yeah, the lens of God, the eyes of God, and no longer through the eyes of man. God bless.